You're listening to the American Scalds Nordic Sound Podcast. If you want to help grow the channel, be sure to share, subscribe, and leave a review on your listening platform of choice, and be sure to join the community over on Reddit at r slash Nordic Sound. friends and welcome back to the American Scalds Nordic Sound Podcast. Today we continue to finish up the two-part series discussing Norway's symphonic beginnings with learning about Johan Svensson, who was Norway's first significant orchestral composer. But first, please if you haven't already, be sure to leave a written review on Apple Podcasts if you're there. And make sure to follow the channel on social media and join our r slash Nordic Sound subreddit. These things really do help grow the channel. Also, I somehow completely forgot about the blog aspect of this show when I rebooted it. So have no fear, if you missed it, the blog is back, where you can find written versions of the episodes along with the music samples embedded right into the text. Be sure to check it out. Now, without further ado, on to the show. So as I said, today we continue to finish up the two-part series discussing Norway's symphonic beginnings with learning about Johan Svensson, who was Norway's first significant orchestral composer, who had a crack in mustache, by the way. Svensson is today largely remembered as Grieg's large-form symphonic conservative counterpart, But believe it or not, during both their lifetimes, it was actually Svensson who enjoyed more popularity around the continent. His success in Christiania's music scene during the 1870s was pretty big, but unfortunately when he moved to Copenhagen in the 1880s, from then on he was mainly associated with the Danish music scene despite being Norwegian. Johan's music career began pretty young. Not as young as Agatha Becker Grundahl at four, mind you, but from the age of eight he received music lessons from his father, who came from a very musical Kongsberg family. Svensson was first taught the violin, flute, and clarinet. At the age of 15, he joined the Hunting Corps music band, first as a clarinetist, but later also got to play flute and other instruments as well. The Hunting Corps' conductor was a pretty renowned musician who took interest in the young Svensson and took up the responsibility of being his first music teacher. As a teenager, Svensson composed dances and marches strictly for home performance with his family. His interest in music took a dramatic uptick in the autumn of 1857, however, when our friend Halfdan Karolf started a series of subscription concerts in Christiania, and here most of the city's professional musicians participated in the orchestra, including Svensson. At the first concert of this series, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony was performed, and this revealed Svensson to a whole new kind of music, something far richer than the popular dances and marches he had played so far in his life. While performing with this orchestra, Svensson worked very closely with German violinist and composer Karl Arnold, who took Svensson under his wing. Svensson himself would later write that, quote, Since he was an incomparable lecturer, the most excellent I have known, both in practical and spiritual terms, I learned from him a large part of what became fundamental to my entire artistic future. End quote. Svensson, eventually feeling restricted by Norway's rather humble music scene, traveled abroad to advance his development, and in 1862 he set out for Germany. He thought he could make a living as a musician, but as most of us even today learn the hard way, it's a lot harder than it sounds, or at least it's a lot more work than it sounds. But because of his background and his recommendation from Karl Arnold, the Norwegian consulate in Lübeck let the young musician stay with him and even helped him get a scholarship. Eventually, Svensson received a personal scholarship from King Charles IV, and on December 5th, 1863, he enrolled himself as a student at the Conservatory of Music in Leipzig as a classmate of Edvard Grieg's. Though he was initially studying to become a concert violinist, and a good one at that, he came down with an unfortunate case of what I can only assume to be tendonitis, which permanently took him out of the violin game. Remember that back in the 19th century, there were a thousand different ridiculous names for the same medical condition. So just putting the pieces together, tendonitis or carpal tunnel seems most likely. Fortunately for us, Svensson was also surrounded by composition teachers who saw the potential in him. In a somewhat cryptic turn of luck for us, his tendonitis is the very reason we have his beautiful music to listen to today, such as his two symphonies and his violin concerto, which I cannot recommend enough. What really sets Svensson apart from Grieg, the looming giant of Norwegian music who we will be discussing next week, is that unlike Grieg, Svensson spent more time abroad interested in the music scenes of Vienna and Copenhagen than Grieg did. Svensson's life kept him constantly exposed to new trendy and mainstream musical developments on the continent, and he even developed a very close friendship with Richard Wagner. Once you listen to his first symphony, you can really tell what kind of difference it made to Svensson spending more time abroad, away from the hype of Norwegian nationalism back home compared to someone like Grieg. Though he wasn't completely immune to the fervors of Norwegian nationalism, mind you, and hints of his native music did come through his icy cosmopolitan crust once in a while, 
which I argue adds to his charm and continued to separate him from just sounding like another Brahms. Example of this can again be heard throughout both of his symphonies, and especially in his violin concerto. In fact, all of Svensson's large-scale work straddle the line between traditional German composition and the developing Norwegianism that we see happening in the middle of the 19th century. Svensson shows that not all Norwegian music must be wrapped up in the Norwegian flag and served with locks, but a more subtle and nuanced approach could also do a lot to make Norway a little more prevalent in the mainstream cultures, just as Otto Winterhelm argued a few decades earlier. So while still not entirely German-sounding, the subtle ethnic and nationalistic differences one can hear in his symphonies are enough to tell you this definitely isn't your run-of-the-mill Germanic symphony either. There's this distinctly Nordic charm throughout this otherwise heavy-handed genre of the symphony that's hard to overlook, and almost every part of the orchestration sings with that signature crisp Nordic sound. Among the most notable of Svensson's champions was Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky admired the Norwegian's work, praising his violin concerto as a work, quote, full of life, brilliance, and spontaneity, and free from German babble. For many reasons, including Tchaikovsky's, this violin concerto is only surpassed to me by Sibelius's in terms of charm and warmth. Again, at least in my opinion, but my opinion is the one with the podcast. Listening to any movement of this concerto side by side with a German concerto reveals Svensson's distinctly Nordic fixation on dance rhythms, lyricism, and expressive simplicity while making the German fixation on the progress, intricacy, and harmonic innovation more apparent by contrast. Not that one side is better than the other, mind you, but what matters is Svensson's achievements on giving audiences a new cultural take on a genre as popular as the violin concerto or the symphony. There's one last aspect of Svensson's output I'd love to discuss. As you might have noticed if you've taken the time to listen to his music, he had an incredible talent for orchestration and harmony. The best use of this talent, in my opinion, was in his folk song arrangements. No, not to the degree of complexity to which Grieg arranged folk songs, but Svensson took folk melodies from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and yes, even Iceland, and set them for orchestra with that distinct warmth of Svensson's orchestration. My favorite one is of his Norwegian setting called Last Year As I Was Tending the Goats. And yes, you've guessed correctly, it's yet another Seder Girl song. But even more, it's a rearrangement of Alla Bull's same melody associated with Seder Girls. You see how this all gets connected. If I haven't sent the point home yet that the 19th century caught virtually every Norwegian in a tide of national pride, then maybe this quote from Karen Larson's History of Norway will convince you. At no other time in history have artists and poets alike been so inspired by the one great love of country, its nature, people, and cultural heritage. The fact that Svensson was hundreds of miles away from Norway trying to distance himself from more nationalistic composers, even he couldn't resist the call of his Norwegian melodies. But his folk arrangements were evidence of another broader social change, one which was actually the opposing side to Norwegianism, and that was the growing desire for a pan-Nordic alliance. Up until the 1860s, there was a growing desire for the Nordic countries to band together under one alliance, a noble, thoroughly romantic idea. However, this proved to be just that, a nice idea. In 1864, Prussia invaded Denmark, and neither Norway nor Sweden answered Denmark's call for aid, putting the last nail in the coffin for any idea of a pan-Nordic brotherhood. Svensson, publishing works from all of the Nordic countries, not just his, is pretty reflective of this political and social vision for a pan-Nordic alliance. And it was his ability to create these mainstream large-form orchestral works which appealed to European audiences, while also putting in a nod to the music of his homeland, that makes Svensson such a special composer. And so friends, that brings us to the end of this week's episode of the American Scald's Nordic Sound Podcast. Please remember to give me some feedback on what sort of content you'd love to see on the channel, and be sure to leave a review, comment, and subscribe, as it really helps the channel grow. And be sure to tune in on Wednesday mornings for my Nordic Sound Today show, where each week I discuss current events and performers in today's Nordic music scene. Then, you can join in on the discussions over on Reddit at r slash Nordic Sound, or follow me on Instagram as well. Let's try and create a vibrant Nordic music community together, and I look forward to seeing you on next week's episode of the American Scalds Nordic Sound Podcast. 